The and opinions expressed by the hosts of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. and welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod. We're webcasting to you live from the Center for Autism and Related Disorders headquarters in Tarzana, California. Uh, sometimes we have gremlins in the studio. I swear we have gremlins this morning. I know we're getting close to the Halloween uh, celebration and uh, there's been creaking noises and some strange things going on here this morning. So we'll see what happens. But you know what they say, uh, you know, sometimes we say we have a big, big show for you. Boy, that is certainly true for you, for you today. We have some amazing guests for you jam-packed end-to-end -end show really excited about that today I want to start out by reminding you that this entire show we're going to be with you live for the next two hours the entire show is meant to be interactive we're hoping that you will participate with us tell us your thoughts your questions your concerns things that you want us to talk about and interact with our guests we've got a total of four count them four guests in uh, either in the studio or via Skype this morning. So there's something for everyone. Uh, I also want to remind you, and Emily's going to show you on the screen, some of the different ways that you can interact with us. If you're watching us live, I know that you're probably watching us in one of two places, either at www.autism-live.com or you're watching us on YouTube, on our very own YouTube channel. If you're watching us on autism-live.com, then you will see that there is a computer screen and if you click the button on the computer screen you will be able to watch the live show or the most recent show and you can also then pick between the, uh, the recent shows what you would like to see but no matter whether we're live or not there is a white box that is sitting next to the computer screen and in that box you can put your cursor and you can type away hit enter and it magically shows up here on my screen i have the ability to interact with you in real time and you have the ability to ask our guests questions so that's the really cool part remember that there is no login there is no credit card it's totally free we don't know who you are so you have total anonymity you can ask whatever you want to ask however if you want us to get back to you personally, if there's something that you want more information about or somebody says something and they say, hey, we can email that to you, make sure that you do send us a way to get back in touch with you. I have a way of editing that out before I let the audience at home see that so that we can preserve your anonymity, which we know is important to you. It's important to us as well. So I hope that you will interact. And uh, as I said, there's lots of other ways that you can watch the show, uh, lots of other ways that you can interact. Please pick what's favorite for you, but those are a couple of easy ways to watch the show and to interact. At the start of the show, I always like to remind you that I am not an expert in autism. Oh no. <laughs> And I make no bones about that. I don't try to hide it. Uh, it's glaringly obvious a lot of the time. But I'm a parent. I am a mom of a beautiful, beautiful son. He was diagnosed with autism at the age of two and a half. He's about to be ten and a half. And he is doing remarkably well because I ran into people who gave me information. And I learned very quickly that information is so valuable on this journey through autism. And whether you are a parent teacher practitioner who is loving and wanting to see progress in a child or a teenager or a young adult who's on the autism spectrum, or you yourself are on the autism spectrum, we know that that information is key. So I want to pay that forward. And that's part of the reason why I'm here and part of the reason why all of our crew works so hard to hook you up with the information that you need. But don't be a shrinking violet. Let us know what you need so that I don't have to guess. I always like to say I gave up mind reading to be an autism mom. 
Uh, so let us know what you need. Okay, uh, we want to get started because there's so many different things to talk about today. So we like to start off the show with something that we fondly refer to as the jargon of the day, the jargon du jour. This is when we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym, and we try to make sense of it within our world. So a lot of times these these phrases they they have some meaning maybe we heard this before but now we uh we need to learn it in this new context my mind is thinking about 85 things can you tell i'm distracted okay so this is really important our phrase for today is token economy what is this and why is it essential to us and how can this help us to lead a happier more fulfilled life because it can that's the secret here okay our actual definition here token economy earning generalized conditioned reinforcers as an immediate consequence for specific behaviors, then exchange them for backup reinforcers. Okay, if you don't understand what that means, then welcome to my party. Because I still, I know exactly what a token economy is and this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So let's look at our working definition where we can pare this down a little bit more and see if we can make some sense of it. Okay, when a child earns tokens, stickers, coins, or something else that is motivating so that they can trade it for something else. So recently, uh, and this can look like so many different things. You want it to be something that's fun and motivating and that makes sense in the context of what you're doing. So let's say that you're going to the grocery store and you, you have a child who's had a struggle with uh, behaving at the grocery store and you wanna give them something, you wanna give them something to work towards so that they'll behave in the grocery store. You might set up a token economy. You can do it on your phone. You can have a sticker sheet. I used to have a little laminated sticker sheet that they made for me, my therapists. And at different times, the stickers on it, they were Velcroed, they had different characters on it depending on where my son was at developmentally and what he was into. So when he was real little, they were little Mickey Mouse stickers that they had laminated and put Velcro on. So I had my sheet and, you know, for each child in each circumstance, it can be a different number of stickers. So. Um, I, I had three stickers and that when he did good things, he got to keep his stickers. Um, if something went wrong, he might lose a sticker. But the whole idea was if you got a certain number of stickers or if you had a certain number of stickers left, when we were done and he, you are very clear about the guidelines, then he would get something. So for that kid that flips out in the aisle of the grocery store, you can say, okay, you've got five stickers walking into the grocery store. And if you're doing good behavior, you're going to keep your stickers. Um, but you know, if you stand up in the cart, you're going to lose a sticker, right? Um, and and you got to have at least three stickers by the time we get to the checkout in order to get the lollipop. That might be a circumstance. I, I prefer it more where they don't lose a sticker, where they get a sticker so that you're pointing out because then you get in that habit of noticing good behavior and going look at what you just did i'm going to give you a sticker right it puts you in a better frame of mind i think than in the i'm going to demerit you right but sometimes it works you know it depends on the circumstance recently i went uh with my son and the folks from the a word to the zoo and i'm showing my hand here for a reason because i was saying to some of the therapists here i need to have some sort of an economy set up for my son at the zoo but i you know i'm gonna have the microphone and I'm gonna have all these things that I don't want to juggle and I have to take it out of my purse and I don't want to have my phone out because you can do these token economies on your phone and set them up very easily it's one of my favorite things to do but at the zoo I was it was gonna be a little bit more complicated I knew I was gonna to have to have a pen to take notes uh, on things as we were going along anyway and the suggestion was made to make my hand the token economy so that every time my son did something great and I kind of went over with him beforehand not kind of I did go over with him beforehand some of the behaviors I was looking for for. And when he did those things, I would make a little hash mark on my hand. And that based on, I don't even remember what it was, I think it was that he had to get 30 of them and then he was going to get to go to in and out or there was a Lego involved or something, right? It was clear to him though at the time. And as the day went by, then I could make the little remark marks and I could show them to him to go, good job, because he kind of didn't want to know, he didn't want everybody else to know uh, what was going on, right? But, you know, I could just go, dude, and I could make a, a mark. And he was kind of thrilled and then he would check my hand to see how am I doing how am I doing right it's a way of giving our kids a lot of times we know we want to reinforce we want to reinforce we want to reinforce but you know 
you can't be handing things out at the zoo, right? So uh, the token economy is a way to get from a place where you couldn't give a reinforcement and build up that anticipation and excitement and good behaviors and get a behavior chain going so that you can get to the reinforcement sometime later on. They're fabulous at school. They're absolutely amazing at school because the teacher doesn't always have time to be reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. But, you know, there might be time to give a check mark, give a check mark, and then you can say, you know, you get 16 check marks and you get something, right? Token economy is a way to get the behavior on track. It takes a little while to get the child clear on the concept. And in the beginning, you got to make it super duper easy. You got to make it really possible so they say, oh, I, I see how this thing works. So maybe you only have to get one sticker and then you get the treat. We start with little kids. A lot of times now with technology, the iPhone or something else is really reinforcing for them. So they say, oh, you get a sticker and then you get five minutes of playing on the iPhone. And kids go, well, I want to do that. I want to earn a sticker. Uh, oh, that was how easy it was to earn a sticker. Okay. And then gradually you make it harder. Okay. Now you got to get two stickers. Oh, all right. Well, I could do one so I can do two and you work your way up from there. I once had uh, a system over a summer where Jem had to get a thousand points in order to get, I think it was, uh, I don't know whether it was a Wii or it was a game system. And he did it. He did it. So you can build up it also teaches your child how to like, you know, build towards a goal. They're, they're wonderful. And again, we're, we're going to be talking about technology. I'm giving it away, but, um, I'm giving away the surprise, but, um, you can do this on your phone. They have all kinds of apps that you can do this, make a token economy on your phone. All right. Uh, so that's our jargon for the day. It can make the difference in a great outing or a great day. Really worth knowing about. We also always have a question of the day for you. And uh, so our question today, very timely, what kind of app would you love to see on the market for autism? What would you like to see? Chances are there's probably some version of it that exists, but we'd love to hear from you guys. What would you like to see in an app? Do you want a device that tracks progress? Do you want, uh, I mean, the sky's the limit, right? Do you want an app that uh, solves, I, I know people have talked about teenagers wanting an app for, I want to know what to do in this social circumstance that I want to plug in uh, something and say, I just ran into, you know, my app with their new uh, significant other, what's the appropriate thing to say, you know? Uh, so that kind of a social app, what would you like? Let's dream a little. Uh, and we, we're gonna be talking with some app developers, so just let us know, maybe we'll forward that on to them. We also always have a topic of the week. If you haven't guessed already, and like I said, I already gave away the surprise. Um, our topic this week, we're talking about technology and we're talking about apps for autism, but in a bigger sense, all the different ways that technology can play a role in helping us to create progress for autism. So we have your apps for autism, but I'm thinking of it more in terms of technology. So some apps and some programs and different ways that we can use technology. I'm really excited about this week and we have some amazing guests lined up for you. Pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, today, in fact, I mentioned that we have four, count them, four guests today. Our first guest up today, uh, although he has been delayed by traffic, so he's going to be a couple of minutes late, Alex Plan Plank excuse me, from wrongplanet.net is going to be with us. We've had Alex on the show. He is pretty much a regular around here. And uh, he is an amazing young man, a filmmaker on the spectrum himself. He created wrongplanet.net when he was a teenager. And if you haven't been there before, you need to check it out because it's a great resource for, I would say, kids upwards of 10. And a really wonderful resource, but really essential for our teenagers, young adults, and adults. Uh, an amazing, amazing resource. So if you haven't already been there, I really want to encourage you to check it out. And we'll be talking about that and so much more with Alex. He's going to be talking about the arts and about dealing with technology with us in just a little while. Then a little bit later in this first hour, for the first time in the show, we're going to have Lois Jean Brady. And I'm really excited to have her here. She is the author of Apps for Autism. 
Autism, an amazing book that really got us all started thinking along these lines about how can I use these different apps to help with autism. Uh, she is an amazing woman, speech and language pathologist, and she also uh, does a show called Autism TV Today. We're going to talk about all of that with her, and she's got a recommendation for a bunch of different apps for kids at different, at, at different chronological ages and at different abilities that she's going to be sharing with us. That's uh, still in this hour. And then in the next hour, Matt Asner from Autism Speaks, he's an autism dad. He's going to be joining us. Last Thursday, he was with us and he started to tell the story about when his son was nearly abducted. He's going to finish that story for us today. And I, I'm so happy that we know that the ending is that his son was fine and was not abducted, but I can't wait to hear what happened. I'm sure it's something that we can all learn from. And then towards the end of the show, Stuart Duncan is going to be with us and very excited to have him here. He, of course, is an amazing dad. Uh, he is a blogger and you guys, if you haven't read his blog, it's amazing. Autism from a dad's view, uh, from a father's view, excuse me. And, uh, but he's not here to talk about that. He's going to be talking with us today about autcraft. If you've got kids who are into Minecraft, oh my goodness, you need to be around for this interview with Stuart. He's created something. It's, it's been on my wish list. I've been wishing that somebody would make this. Stuart has made it. It is a server, uh, a Minecraft, or Minecraft server that is just for kids on the autism spectrum, just for, excuse me, not just kids, individuals on the autism spectrum, because I know that there are some teens and some young adults who are playing it as well. It's safe. And it's got some restrictions on it that, as a parent, I love. So Stuart Duncan is going to be with us towards the end of the show. All of that and ever so much more, including our Autism Daily newscast story of the day. So stick with us. We're going to be back after these messages. In the cold winter months, it can be really nice to sit down and enjoy a nice, warm apple crisp. And thanks to Breads from Anna, we can make one for you gluten and yeast free. So let's go over what we're going to need. To make the filling, you're going to need one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, seven cups of Granny Smith apples, and three tablespoons of Breads from Anna pie crust. For your topping, you're going to need one cup of rolled oats, a third cup of brown sugar, three quarters of a cup of Breads from Anna pie crust mix, three quarters of a cup of butter, melted, one teaspoon ground cinnamon, one tablespoon vanilla, and two tablespoons of water. Don't forget to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So now let's cut some apples. We're gonna peel and slice six apples. So as you're cutting your apples, make sure you add your lemon juice to make sure that they don't brown and oxidize. So once all my apples are cut and sliced, I'm gonna go ahead and add the nutmeg, cinnamon, and the pie crust mix. So we're just gonna stir these together. So we've got a 13 by nine, and we're just gonna spray this with a little bit of grapeseed oil. and then we're gonna pour our apples into the dish. And to make our topping, we're just gonna combine the rest of the ingredients in a small bowl. All right, that looks pretty good. We're just gonna pour this evenly over the top of the apples and we should be good to go. All right, this is ready to bake, 30 to 35 minutes at 350 degrees. It's been 30 minutes, so our crisp should be all done. All right, it's pretty hot, so you would probably want to let it sit for a little while, but we're going to go ahead and serve up a slice here. To learn how you can win free mix from Breads from Anna, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash autismlive. See you soon.
Welcome back to Autism Live. It's time for our daily story from the Autism Daily Newscast. In their headlines today, autistic children less approachable than their peers, new study says. A new study conducted by Anglia Ruskin University of Cambridge, UK, has shown that autistic children are less approachable and deemed to be less trustworthy than their peers of a similar age group. The study, published in the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders, suggests that typical children are also less friendly towards children with autism. Children formed negative associations with autistic children within 30 seconds of knowing them. Psychologist and head researcher Dr. Stephen Stagg investigated reactions of a number of children after watching a 30-second silent video. The videos of 11-year-old children were mixed by the researchers, containing the same, num same number of autistic children with other children of a similar age. Children were then asked to rate the video they had just watched in terms of who they most wanted to be their friends and who they thought they could trust. The children with autism rated lower on both counts than their peers. Dr. Stagg said, children with autism spend many years learning about facial expressivity, but our research shows that by the age of 11, their slower development in this area is already marking them out amongst their typically developing peers. Children with autism have a difficult time at school, and research published by the National Autistic Society showed that 40% of children with autism reported being bullied. According to the Department of Education, 71% of children with an autism diagnosis are currently educated in mainstream schools. And so the takeaway here is, as they continue to say, it is therefore important that schools work with typically developing children to educate them about autism in order to break through the negative impressions that can be formed through a moment's contact. This story and other important up-to-the-minute news stories are available at AutismDailyNewsCast.com. We hope that you'll go there and check out. Stick with us. We're going to be back after these messages. friendly for kids with allergies and what we're gonna make today is a pizza crust we got lots of emails and I really appreciate all the feedback a lot of folks have been asking about what pizza crust is yeast free no eggs and uh, no gluten and all the other fun stuff so we're gonna take that challenge head-on and if anyone who likes New York type style thin crust pizza oh that's what we're going for today we're gonna start with one and a half cups of almond flour now for folks who have er, allergies with nuts, there's a great um, bread pizza crust mix from Ina's that I really like. It's another great alternative for people who are avoiding a lot of carbs and, and sugars. So I like this one as well. So Jamie's gonna get the flaxseed meal going and now let's talk about the starches. What's really important about this recipe to get that crisp New York style pizza or crust is arrowroot. I love arrowroot starch. It has a lot to offer for binding and pulling this recipe together. And I also have my coconut oil. I'm a big fan of coconut oil. You've heard me talk about that many times. Next, we're going to add in our, um, our spices. I like a little spicy. If you've got a kid that doesn't like spices, it's okay. But I've gone really light in the oregano and basil. So we're going to go ahead that and add that in with the baking soda. And for folks who like a little sweetness, I do like maple syrup a lot but you can just add just a wee bit for flavor. I use typically maybe a half a teaspoon. So what's great about what Jamie's helping me with now, it's great for kids that have um, digestive issues. It gives a, a great deal of fiber and also allows a binding, um, like what you would look for in a gluten flour. This is um, a great gluten-free option. And this is a modified recipe from the website Real Sustenance. I love those guys. They do a great job, but I always like to tweak things. I appreciate them. Shout out. So we're ready to roll out our pizza crust. I'm so excited, Jamie. This tastes really good. We're going to get the pizza crust going and the pizza toppings ready as well. So all I'm doing with the pizza 
Crush is laying down some of my great parchment, um, unbleached parchment paper. And here you have it with the rolling pin. That's always good signs. So we're just going to real simply roll this thing out. They want it, you really want it to be as thin as possible. And it, it's really all a matter of preference as to how thin you want it to be. This is not a really good thick crust. So that looks good. So I'm just going to go and, and outline my pizza crust so it, it's going to look a little prettier when I take it out of the oven. So don't be afraid of the rolling pin. Your husband can be afraid of the rolling pin, but you don't need to be afraid. This is why you got to love parchment paper. And here we go. We're going to pre-cook this at 350 for about 22 minutes. Look at this pizza crust. It's not totally cooked yet, so that's okay because we're going to add our toppings to this. Most of us have a can of organic tomato sauce in our uh, pantry. So all I'm doing is adding in just a smidge, I'd say a quarter teaspoon of oregano. A smidge doesn't work in measurement. A quarter teaspoon of basil. And a wee bit of salt. Okay, a quarter teaspoon of salt. And for, for kids who are really sensitive tomatoes, this is great because you can make it as fine as you want it to be. Not so fast, not good. So if you want to cheat, you can use this um, puree. I like to take the roasted tomatoes, which is great, and then put this around on my pizza crust. I know, use my fingers. That's all it is. I don't care. Made with love. <laughs> Kids love helping to make pizza, too, because they feel really involved in it. And they get to put however much they want up there. So yeah. good family affair. And we love the day of cheese. It goes on pretty much almost everything in my house. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the day of cheese here. Too much cheese um, makes it a little soggy. So you may want to cook it a little longer and have it get a little bubblier. Um, we're also using some organic sausage. This is the sweet Italian sausage, and the more, the better. And then we're going to add our sliced black olives. Uh, I love olives, but again, if you've got a kid that likes pepperoni, there's a nice little free pepperoni from uh, Borders Hill. There's our pizza, ready to go in the oven. I'm ready. Let's do this. Our pizza's in the oven at 400 degrees. You can go anywhere from about 25 to 30 minutes, but again, you really want it bubbly and cooked. If you put it at a higher temperature, the fake cheese doesn't like that, and it can scald. Your kid's going to love you for such a great pizza. We'll see you next time on What's Left. If you have any questions, please email us at autismlive at gmail.com, or you can hit facebook.com slash autismlive, or go to the TACA website at TACANOW, T-A-C-A-N-O-W, there's thousands of recipes waiting for you to enjoy. We'll see you next time at Autism Live. What's more? You say howdy, we say hi. Let's get loud, let's get wild. Let's get, let's get, let's get wild. Welcome back to Autism Live. It's Tuesday, so on Tuesday we try to find time to give you a healthy eating tip. And this morning is no different. Uh, I, what I want to talk about today is getting our kids to eat a variety of things. And I know sometimes that seems really overwhelming and our kids are sometimes very picky eaters. And I just want to share a story with you about something that reminds, because sometimes I think of my son as a picky eater uh, and then I'm reminded that that know that he would be adventuresome about some things if I let him be. My son has been asking me since he could manned for squid. When we go to Whole Foods, which we go to the Whole Foods market on a regular basis, my husband, as I've mentioned before on the show, my husband works for a Whole Foods market, and one of the big things that they have in the case, they have a, uh, a case of fish that's in the first aisle, and there's usually a squid or an octopus. And it used to be that we would go into the store and we would take a look at the squid or the octopus. That was a big reinforcer for my son, and he wanted to cook it. And I have been saying no for seven years. And finally, the other day, I said, okay, and I've let him 
and try other things in the case, right? I said, okay, we will try a little bit of squid. And uh, I bought three little <laughs> sets of tentacles and, and took them home. And I, it cost me a total of 45 cents. So this was not a huge expense. I was gagging the whole time. I asked him, the guy recommended at the counter. I said, how do you cook this? He said, you want to cook it maximum of two minutes long, a little bit of olive oil or butter. I told him butter wasn't an option. He said a little bit of olive oil and he suggested some spices, but they all had gluten in them. So we decided that we would do salt and uh, a little bit of olive oil and we did uh, some lemon juice and some basil. And I said to my son, what else should we put with the squid? And he decided he wanted squid and snow peas. Uh, it's amazing when you let them tell you what they want, what they will say. And, uh, and and I know I'm fortunate that he can put words to that. That wasn't always the case, right? Uh, we've worked very hard for that, but I know that some of you have worked hard and it still isn't where you're at. And I, I hope that you get to the point where you have functional communication where food is involved because it's very rewarding when you can actually make them the thing that they actually want, as weird as it may sound. He loved it. He loved the squid, popped them in his mouth like popcorn. I posted it on Facebook. Many of you wrote to me and said, yes, my picky, finicky eater, children who won't eat anything will eat squid. I'm just saying, who knew? Uh, I'm told that there is dried squid. Yes, I know. I'm trying really hard not to gag while I'm here talking to you. But, uh, um, uh, uh, one of my, one of our moms here, uh, an autism mom, wrote in and said, "I've got two kids that are very finicky eaters, and they will eat dried squid." <laughs> You know, um, and when I said to my son, I said, oh, a mom wrote in and said they make dried squid. And he said, ooh, sounds good. What can I tell you? I don't know whose child he is, but I think that it, it you know, it definitely reminded me we should ask our kids, what do you want? And allow them to be adventuresome. Squid and snow peas, who would have thought? But he ate it, it's nutritious, very protein, and lots of vitamins, so there you have it. Ask your kids, ask your kids, and if they're not at the point where they can tell you, put some sort of device in front of them, or put pictures in front of them, or take them in the grocery store aisle and ask them to point. It'll be a way of manding, it'll be a great skill, but get them to tell you what they want, and in that way, they might be more adventuresome. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, Alex Plank from wrongplanet.net will be joining us. Stick with us. find out you're having a boy you always think like oh he's gonna play football he's gonna do this and that and then when he's diagnosed all of those things get washed away it's like that piece that's always in the back of your mind you know where is he what is he doing is he safe we really didn't know what we were dealing with I wish that they could have directed me a little bit more and provided me some information I was a young mom I didn't know what it was like to raise a boy despite a boy with autism Hundreds of thousands of families are not getting the help they need for their children with autism all around the country. Act Today is determined to bridge the gap. These families really have to go through a lot to get a grant. The application process isn't easy. The records, the diagnosis proof, they're really battling for their kids. So when we can give them a grant, it is so wonderful to see that they succeed in getting that help for their children. Our founder, Dr. Doreen Grampache, is an amazing woman, and she is one of the world's foremost authority on behavior of children with autism. She's extremely knowledgeable, and she oversees every single grant we give. She is part of that process. People may think of autism care and treatment as simply schooling or therapy. But, you know, we provide important safety supports, things like fencing, for example. The whole family is living in fear of that child running out into traffic. I recently delivered an iPad to a little boy with some of the apps that are out there for children with autism. Miracles happen. I got the iPad from Act. From Act. What yeah. did it say? Can you repeat that, Dustin? I got the iPad for that. We have helped so many military families. And when I think of these brave families that are fighting two battles, one to protect our country and one for the right treatment and care for their children, 
it, it breaks my heart and I think we have to do more as a nation to help them. There's not a day that doesn't go by that we don't think about it. Some people say, oh, he's normal. You, you don't see the battles that I see every single day. My husband does have to deploy and when they get on that bus, that might be the last time that my kids ever see them. So I called and then they informed me that he had received the grant, which was like a blessing from above. I was just like speechless. I just started to cry because, you know, without it, we would, we would have been lost. The ACT grant was a total miracle. Without that, they wouldn't be able to receive a service dog. So we're so appreciative what they've done for us as a family. Recently, ACT Today funded a program for military children with autism in San Diego, the Inclusion Films program, which is run by Joey Travolta, and teaches uh, kids on the autism spectrum literal filmmaking skills. They learn how to make a movie. Are we ready? There you go, got it. Okay. Everything that goes into the process of making a film goes into everyday life. So they're learning life skills, they're learning to collaborate. It was really nice to know how much they were enjoying this camp and they're with people who are supporting them and are making them feel great about themselves and their differences and their similarities. And I get two kids that are working together and apart and together and apart, so it's an interrelationship as well as a camp and a learning experience. It's so fulfilling when I get letters. One stands out for me, a, a boy who was 14 with Asperger's and we gave him a grant to go to a drama camp. He wrote to us and said, Dear Act Today, thank you for letting me belong for the first time in my life. These kids are remarkable. You know, we underestimate them. They're so knowledgeable. They're so capable. And we can change the life of a family, which means changing the life of a community. Welcome back to Autism Live. Joining us in the studio is Alex Plank from wrongplanet.net. Alex, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thrilled to have you here. You've got a topic that you want to talk about with us this morning. I do. Share. Um, I forgot what it was, but... We're talking about arts. Arts and autism. Are we? Oh, yes. excellent. All right. Well, I didn't know that. I just... I, I, I'm just kidding. We talked about this beforehand. Alex is monkeying That's not with true. Me. That's not true. We didn't talk about this at all. I haven't even talked to you for... I've seen you forever. He's lying I got, you, will, to you right No, now. because I got a haircut. I said to you, you look really handsome today. Did you get your hair cut? And you said, I don't think I got my hair cut since the last time, but maybe it just is styled slightly different. No, I did get my hair cut recently. Alex likes to devil me. Alex likes to put me through the ringer. This is Alex's, I think you take great pleasure in doing this to it's me. It's not pleasurable. <laughs> but yet I'm you're sure laughing and funny. saying, we didn't talk about this. We, we did talk about this. We talked about this while you were in the car this morning, and then we talked about it when you just came in. You said you wanted to talk about arts and autism. Yeah, well, the reason that I brought that up is because, first of all, there is a concert on Thursday this week, and it is a benefit for Autism Speaks, and mm -hmm. I'll be introducing one of the things there. And and it's called the Blue Jean Ball, correct? That is correct. Okay, I was thinking, I wasn't thinking of it as a concert, but it's it's a concert? Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought there was going to be dancing too, but I guess you can have dancing at a concert. Okay, and who are you introducing at the concert? I don't know yet. Okay, so it's all a mystery to you. Yeah, but you gonna... should. I should know. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, they just haven't told me. Okay, so but you are going to be at the Blue Jean Ball, and it's happening this Thursday, so two days from now. And there, are, I know that there are several big acts. We're going to have Matt Asner on a little bit later on in the show, and maybe he can tell us about some of the acts that are going to be there. Yeah, and we can figure out which one you're introducing. I'm not introducing an act. I'm oh. introducing one of the pillars of autism. Okay, aren't you a pillar of autism? I think pillars of autism are like awareness and advocacy and okay. other things like that, not actual people. I'm not a person. However, okay. if they made an exception to the rule, I would probably be the first one that they would they Because <laughs> you are a pillar of autism. Uh, okay, I, so... Pillar isn't the best. <laughs> 
I, mean, I think of a pillar as being something that's strong, that upholds a lot of things. Uh, that's, so, that's a good way of looking at it. Right? Right? Isn't that what a pillar does? So you're going to be introducing one of the pillars, one of the concepts that's important to Autism Speaks yes. at this event. Okay. And, but we don't know which pillar yet you're introducing. No. Okay. But I, 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 and I believe that I'm, I, I'm doing it with uh, Diane Kruger. From the bridge, mm -hmm. uh, we were t Matt Asser and I were actually talking about the bridge last week because somebody wrote in the question and said, "How do you feel about how autism is portrayed on television?" And it was an example that Matt gave of how it's portrayed really responsibly and quite quite beautifully. I think it is too. Although you'll always get those people who like have to like find something that's wrong. For instance, yes, <laughs> someone made a comment about how. <laughs> how she she says she doesn't like eating bananas and then oh. but then she proceeds to drink milk and clearly anyone who knows autism knows that every single person with autism cannot drink milk and and because of this the show is like completely inaccurate oh uh, well and i mean, we all have but i drink milk all the time right so right not everybody who has autism doesn't drink milk so but people get caught up in their experience of autism and think that's what it's going to look like yeah. even people in our community need to know if you've met one person with autism you've met one person with autism yeah amazing all right we're going to take a short break we're going to come back with alex and i'm going to ask him to talk just a little bit about hacking autism because we're talking about technology this week so stick with us. The Institute for Behavioral Training provides courses in applied behavior analysis for the treatment of autism. Access IBTE learning videos on the move and learn at your own pace. I'm going to talk a little bit about intensity. IBTE learning makes any location your classroom on the go. So our objectives for today are to really Get professional guidance with IBT face-to-face -face training. IBT face-to-face -face training courses prepare you to effectively implement ABA-based interventions. Choose between small group and one-to-one -one instruction. Earn BCBA supervision hours via one-to-one -one video conferencing. So I had a chance to review your BIP today. You know what? It looked really good. You did a good job with that. IBT, continuing education courses. Earn credit through webinars, conferences, article reviews, and e-learning videos. You can learn more at ibehavioraltraining.com. IBT, 360 degrees of ABA training. Welcome back to Autism Live. Our very special guest here in the studio with us is Alex Plank from WrongPlanet.net. And Alex, I promised that you were going to talk briefly about hacking autism because we're talking about technology and autism. And I know you covered uh, the, the hacking autism event, the hackathon, correct? Yeah. And how can people watch, because you did a whole documentary on it, how can they access that and find that? If you just go to wrongplanet.net and go to the search and type in hacking autism. Okay. We, this morning, were having trouble finding where the search feature is. Can you tell us where the search feature is on okay. wrongplanet.net? Yes. Okay. So when you go to the page, there's yeah. a big sign that says wrongplanet.net. Yes. And then directly to the right of it, it says search. Okay, great. So if you want to see Alex covering the hackathon, uh, that's where you can go to find that video tell us though what, what what did you like about the event what was great about the event it's just a lot of developers from the community and this was up in the Silicon Valley up in uh, Cupertino California and all these developers came and developed apps for people with autism for tablets and and, and, and devices. Which is a, an awesome, well, it's like a think tank for thinking of ways in which we can make life better and considering autism, right? For, uh, using well, technology. Uh, it's, not, it's not just a think tank, they actually created they usable it. products. I mean, there, right. was a, there were products that resulted from this, this afternoon, <clears throat> that, well, the entire day long of coding. People took off from work and came over there and did that. Amazing. So if I had to ask you, because you are very much into technology, you're a filmmaker, and you use technology in lots of different ways, you created your own website, and if I asked you one piece of technology or one app that you use that you think really enriches your life that you would never part with, what would it be? One piece of technology that... Yeah, or one app, or one of each. One piece of an technology. App? Yeah, is there an app that you use that you would not be without? 
I don't think there's any specific app that, mm -hmm. that I use that I wouldn't be without. I mean, the, the internet in general. Yeah. I think that that's the beauty of it. There are so many different ways to do things now. But it, I'm, I'm using an app right now called Mind Bloom mm -hmm. that I'm just loving mm -hmm. and that I'm talking to everybody about and saying, oh, I love this app because it's helping me to get more done in my day. Do you have an app like that that you like? Um, the only app that I use, honestly, there's no specific app. I use the to-do feature, just the, the main apps on the iPhone that are built in and, and my Google sync and I can have all, all the calendars synced up. All of that is, is indispensable. Yeah, absolutely. And the email, being able to access that anyway. Oh, yeah, on your phone. I, I, that, I, now, I, I didn't understand the whole thing about the smartphones before and now I get it. Being able to access email and my calendar on my phone is life changing. But it's not just that. I can access anything I can access on the computer on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. That isn't as exciting to me. Like, it's usable, but the fact that I have a calendar on my phone and that I can get to my email on phone, it really changed my life. Yeah. But, but you use the Google features a lot. I do. I use the calendar, the email. Uh, I mean, on the, on the phone, that's mainly it. Uh, and the to-do list on my phone I sometimes use. And uh, also, I like the fact that... Uh, I can just search for any information that I need and, and just be able to find out things. And also, like, GPS. Yeah. Like, I mean, getting here, like, I knew exactly when I would arrive. Yes, and Alex said that to me on the phone. I said, how do you know exactly when you're going to arrive I mean, the traffic is bad? And he said, the app, the app tells me. Well, they have, I mean, now you have apps like Waze. It's a GPS where it actually has real-time traffic information. It rerouted me. And that's called Waze? W-A-Z-E. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Alex, thank you so much for being here. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to be joined by Lois Jean Brady, author of Apps for Autism. She is a speech and language pathologist, and she's going to give us some ideas for some apps for different individuals at different chronological ages and at different abilities. And we're looking forward to talking to her for the first time on the show. So stick with us. We're going to be back with more. When Maddie was diagnosed, I'll be honest, I was very ignorant on what autism was. I knew that autism was basically something that hit boys at the age of two to three and shut down. And sometimes you think of the typical Rain Man uh, movie. Um, and with Maddie, she was doing all the same signs and symptoms of a, of a typical child with autism spectrum disorder. Stand up. didn't even acknowledge us coming into the room. Um, she had barely any eye contact. Um, she didn't interact with her sister. She didn't really do anything. She just basically lined up her toys and that was about it. We have a team of seven volunteers, or, or eight now, we have eight volunteers, including my husband and I, and I'm the team leader, and so I do all the curriculum and get everything ready each week. Jana was downstairs until 11 o'clock at night working on curriculum, going through two different textbooks. And then we, as a group, meet on Monday nights, and we would go through what the curriculum was from Jana. And a lot of times we would go, well, how exactly do you do that? How do you sit her at the table and, and do this trial base? Well, what skills has done for us, it's, it's taken that away from Jana trying to figure out the curriculum for one, she can go down, or on our, even our laptop, and she can sit down and through all these questions, it comes up with the different programs. At least for me, it was a relief off my shoulders. I was worried that I might be missing something, um, missing a curriculum that maybe she needs to know, where the skills, they have every, every possible thing your child needs to know from zero to seven. They have a program for that. What noise is this? <laughs> Every program that we did with her, I knew it was specific for what she needed to learn. The, the four skills, it was a lot of, okay, well, is that really age appropriate for a two-year-old? You know, because it's not generalized. It's anywhere from zero to seven. This is what your child needs to know in most, in most manuals you'll find. Um, but for this, okay, yep, she should be learning this. And no, she's not four yet. She doesn't need to know that yet. 
We are so fortunate that Jana was able to attend a conference put on by CARD that opened the door for skills and that um, there's no looking back for us. We started using the program in November and it seemed like by January something just clicked and we have completely kind of came out of her fog that she was in for quite a while. I have never read a documented case on any child that has not benefited anything from applied behavior analysis and uh, now with this new skills and being you know like the e version of ABA I can't imagine it doing anything harmful to their child it, it's nothing but exponential growth for us to see her now it is it just blows us away I mean, we call her our little miracle child because um, in seven months time she has just blossomed into this normal functioning child and suddenly we joke about it all the time like suddenly we have twins if you're even thinking about doing it do it because the absolute worst thing you can do is do nothing at all and even if you use this program and it's just a single mom or a single dad working in the evenings with their child this program is going to benefit them it's it's going to show you where they are it's going to show you where they need to go and it's going to show you what skills and how to get there it is an online book on how to help recover your child. Welcome back to Autism Live. Joining me for the first time on the show is Lois Jean Brady. Lois, welcome to the show. Good morning, Shannon. It's great Good. to be here. It's, Thank you for inviting me. It's so great to have you here. You have a list of credentials that is lengthy. You're a speech and language pathologist. You were explaining to me, because I saw, I saw after your name, CCCSLP. Uh, so tell us really quickly what CCP, C, CCC stands for. <laughs> CCC just means that I'm certified by my national organization, which is ASHA, the American Speech, Hearing, and Language Association. They have um, given me my certificate. Fabulous. And and you are remarkable and prolific. You've got Autism TV Today, and you're the author of Apps for Autism, which was featured a couple of years ago on 60 Minutes. I'd love to talk to you about that later and how much fun that must have been. Yes. But we've invited you today to give our viewers some information about some apps that might be useful to them and that might help with where they're trying to see progress. Absolutely. Apps are um, sweeping our community. Um, before the apps and the iPad came out, it was very difficult to, to reach some of our students, but this has been fabulous. It's given us a huge muscle, Shannon. Um, kids who, who prior to this we couldn't reach, we can now. So um, the apps that I'm going to show you today are not um, recommended by me. They're recommended by hundreds of students. And these are the apps that the students have been successful with and that they use and that they love. And I thought I would just share them with you today. Wonderful. So what do you have to start with? OK, so the first one up is kind of a collaboration of everything that the iPad has and everything that our students on the spectrum need. It's got two never seen before features. It is a communication app. We call them an AAC app, which means Augmentative Alternative Communication. So our students who are nonverbal can use this app to talk. Um, and like I say, it's brand new. It's just hitting the market. It should be out next week. And it's called Inner Voice. And I hope you can see it. It's got this beautiful little girl here. And the thing that's different about this is this little girl, you can put in the picture of the student, the student's parent, the student's brother or sister, um, a favorite person and they will do the talking for you. So let's see her, I pre-programmed a sentence in here, so let's see her talk. I would like to drink some water, please. Okay, so that just takes it a step up. It makes it more visual, more personal. You can see where the words are coming from. Um, it's great. I think that's the remarkable. The other really unique feature about this app is that it has what we call remote prompting. Now this is a new prompt level. Um, our old hierarchy went from physical prompts to verbal prompts to gestural prompts um, to the natural environment. But this one, this, this technology, this mobile technology gives us a whole new prompt level, which I can stand across the room and send a message to this app. 
and then it will speak the message and that prompts the students rather than me having to say to the student, say this or say that. So if you're gonna walk up to a student and say, what's your name? And they're gonna come back and say, what's your name? And you say, no, what's your name? And then they say, no, what's your name? I can send them a prompt that says, my name is Lois. And as soon as they see that prompt, they're gonna look up and say, my name is Lois. Wonderful. That's, That's remarkable. Yeah. And, and Lois, how much does that sell for? And, or how we, it comes out in a week. How, do we know how much it'll sell for? Absolutely. Um, and that's the other great thing. You know, as technology first comes out, it's, it's expensive and then it drops. Well, this one is going to be $19.99. Woohoo. That's so great. That's fabulous. It makes it more accessible for all of our students, not just a handful. All of our students should be able to go out and, and get something like this. Okay, and uh, remarkable. So, inner voice, and we're going to take a break, Lois, but before we go, can you tell us your website that we can go to to find out more information? Because you feature a lot of great stuff on your website. I do. Um, it's Proactive Speech Therapy. Dot com. Wonderful. ProactiveSpeechTherapy.com. All right. We are going to come back with more apps with Lois after a short break. So stick with us. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Smarty. For this month, I figured we we're going to do a super special portrait that is in the theme of October, which means spooky eyes that follow you as you walk around. In this activity, you and your child are going to work on emotions and social dramatic play. So let's get started. The materials you'll be needing are a camera, a ping pong ball, exacto blade, tape, and a marker. And if your kids are up to it, props and costumes. Now let's take some photos. It's a great time to work on emotions and social dramatic play. Let's get our props. See all the colors in the sky tonight It's time to let the sunshine hide Once you've finished your photo shoot with your child, select one of the photos and print it out on a large piece of paper. Now that you've selected your photo, you're going to take an X-Acto blade and just cut out the eyes from it. This part of the activity is definitely only for the adults. Now that you've finished cutting out the eyes, what we're going to do next is take a ping pong ball and cut it in half. You'll see why in just a moment. So with the ping pong balls, we're going to create the illusion of the following eyes. So what you're going to do is take a marker and you're going to make a dot in the very, very center. You're going to want to make it like the same size of what the iris was in the photo. Now that the ping pong balls are done, I'm just going to tape them to the back of the photograph. So does it look like she's following you? Well, I hope you enjoyed this activity for Smarty. Until next time, craft on, guys. Can you see me flying by your side? Welcome back to Autism Live. Uh, via Skype, we have with us Lois Jean Brady, author of Apps for Autism. We're so thrilled to have you here with us today, Lois. And before the break, you told us about a great app, Inner Voice, that's coming out next week. What else do you have for us? Oh, gosh, there's so many um, new apps that are coming out that are fabulous. Um, I think we know... Um, a lot of them, like the Toka Boca apps, are just anything you get from Toka Boca is fabulous. But I kind of wanted to highlight another brand new app. It's for older students. We don't get a lot for older students. Um, and it's made by a father who does have a daughter on the spectrum. Okay. And it's called Pines to Vines. And it's one of the first apps that was made to teach our students regular curriculum with the standards in mind at, um, visually so that they can understand. And I'm gonna see, hopefully you can see a little bit of it. Um, Pines to Vines. And I'm going to turn it around here. And we're gonna pick to read. And you can see it has all the visuals on this side. So it has pictures and videos that supplement the text. Cool. And the text is on this side. You can highlight it and have it spoken for you. You can read it yourself. Um, and it has five different levels. And that is fantastic because now everybody in the class gets to study the same thing. And you don't have to go to a different um, curriculum 
for our students. You can study the same thing and learn about the same things with everyone else in class. It's just fabulous. I love it. And it's the first in a series of um, standards-based textbooks. So and that's really... Are, they, are there lots, excuse me for interrupting, are there lots of different uh, stories that they have or, there, or is it a building library that they're, they're doing? Right now it's just talking about um, the, the, um, the, the biomes, the trees, okay. the rainforest and, and such um, like you would learn in science. But then there's also one for the ocean life and all the different, let's say, um, chapters you would be reading in science. This fills the chapter. Okay, great. Right. Um, again, it's just specifically made for our kids. And I have tried this with some of my um, older middle school kids. They love it. They really love the part where they can go back, highlight it, and have it be read to them. And then later they go back and they try it themselves. It's really a good product. Very right. cool. Pines to Vines. And do you know how much that one costs, Lois? Um, these just hit the store, and I believe they're right around the $20 mark. Okay, great. What else? Um, well, let's see. I got you on a treadmill here. I do. <laughs> I, want, I want to pick your brain. <laughs> um, Shannon, I've been looking in the media, and literacy seems to be the thing for our kids. There's so many kids writing books now. Mm -hmm. We got Eo, we got um, Carly Fleischman, we got, um, what's the new boy, um, Nakoi from Japan, and they're writing books, and these are nonverbal students. So I think the big push we want to do is literacy. We really want to um, teach our students some literacy. Um, most of these students that I just mentioned learned to read by themselves. And then once some adults realized they knew how to read, then they started teaching them to read. We need to teach them to read from the very, very beginning. And luckily, we have tons of apps that they can learn to read with. Um, I think you have Little Speller app. Yes, I do. I have that up on, on our uh, site here. Um, on, and so Emily can bring it up. I, I played a little bit with this this morning and I had a good time because it talked to me. You guys can yes. hear it. Good work. Love it. You spelled the word <laughs> mud. Now, and Shannon, the really you. nice thing about Little Deep. Speller is I can take each individual student and put in their own list of words. Awesome. And they can go around, I usually take them around school, and they take pictures of their favorite things, their favorite people, their favorite places, and then we go back to the therapy room and we put all those in, and now it's kind of like a living set of flashcards. Yeah. Um, that they spell, they hear the word pronounced, and they see this beautiful picture that they themselves have taken. So it's just kind of like bumped up flashcards to a whole new level. Love it. Absolutely yes. love it. And they so. like to do it. They really, really love to do this. And Little and Speller, then, um, little, I, I just want to interrupt you for one second. The little, little Speller, we downloaded this for free this morning. Yes. So for those of you who think this is awesome, this one's free. you got to love free. Okay, go ahead, Jean. It's Lose. fabulous. And then the bump up from there is called Sentence Maker. Ooh. And you take those very same pictures and you implant them in a sentence the same way you did implanted them in the flashcard mode. Okay. So now you can say, say you took a picture of your blue tennis shoes and you, um, and little speller and you wrote shoes. Now you can put that same picture into Sentence Maker and you can write my blue shoes. Cool. So it's, it's just fabulous. That's really cool. Okay, we've got time for one more. What do you want to share? Oh, one more. Okay. Let's see. This one is really good, too. This one is, is fascinating because a lot of my nonverbal um, students are nonverbal because of apraxia. Um, and they're on the spectrum, which means they do not look at your face. So they're missing all those facial cues that we're giving them. And the apraxia just kind of compounds on itself. However, they stare at an iPad intently, and I found so much benefit in an app like this where we take, um, let's say, their peers, and we show them how to do activities, how to say words, how to blow your nose, how to chew food. All those things are very difficult for many, many of our students, and it's, and it's um, had a lot of success. And I'm going to show you my favorite success. Um, way down here at the bottom, kind of give you an idea what it's about. And this is just simply blowing a kiss. Many of our kids cannot even um, use their muscles to pucker up and then suck in some air and, and, and just simply go, it's very difficult. Um, so I had a family member get this app, 
And hopefully you can see this little guy blowing I a can. candle. I can. Look at that. And then he gets two examples. <laughs> so that's one example. And then within a couple of days, um, this little boy's mom was leaving the room and he blew her a kiss. Oh, how and awesome. And she didn't even that? realize that he was paying attention to the app. But they grab these and they hold them really close to their face. In almost in private time, they don't want you there, and then they start practicing these mm -hmm. um, these movements, these pre speech movements. So um, that is really fabulous, and it goes through things such as you know spitting out water, brushing your teeth, um, and then just some very basic opening, closing your mouth, just to get them ready for speech. Great. And what is that app called again? This one is called Vast, V A S T, which means Video Assistant Speech Therapy free speech okay great and do we know and what the cost of that one is that actually takes them into speech um via syllables words two syllable words and phrases and then moves them on up into speech and language so we've had really great success if i had a little more time i'd show you some great videos of some kids but oh and i'd love to see another them day, well, Shannon. another day and uh, truly because this has been so helpful and i want to remind people tell them your we website again because you feature so much information on your website and if they're interested in this kind of thing they definitely want to check out your website so tell us again yes it's um proactive speech therapy.com and Shannon, I have a Facebook page that's called okay. Apps for Autism, and I post the free apps that day because awesome. all the developers will, at one time or another, put their apps up for free. It's really cool. They're really cool people. The developers are. If it's their child's birthday, well, then the apps go free that day. That's and then awesome. I post them. So that is awesome. They would awesome. like to go get a, li a list of the free apps that day. Again, that's Facebook Apps for Autism. Thank you so much for being sure. here with us and for sharing this wonderful information. We'll have to have you back again because I know you just have so much information that is so useful to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'd be happy to come back anytime. Good, great, great to hear. All right, we're gonna take a short break and then when we come back, Matt Asner from Autism Speaks is gonna be joining us here. He is an autism dad and we made him promise that he would tell the story of how his son was almost abducted. Fortunately, he was not, but we wanna hear the story so that we can all learn from it. Stick with us, back after these. I know a cute little blue-eyed boy, and his name is Jack. Jack Riley. He got a big, warm, blue-eyed soul that makes your heart beat fast. Yes, I sing Jack, Jack, Jack is my buddy. Jack, Jack, Jack is my buddy. Everybody around is so down with Jack. Can I have corn on the cob and some turkey? I want to eat anything else. Yeah, I want dessert now. A few months ago, Jessica and Jack Riley began doing functional pretend play, where they played with toys functionally. For example, placing pretend food on a plate and then pretending to eat it. Recently, they began practicing sociodramatic play, where they each take on a different role. They've been playing restaurant, where they take turns being the waiter, cook, and customer. Hi, welcome to the restaurant. Hi, welcome to my restaurant. Hi. Good job. I would like to eat some oranges and a hot dog, please. Hello. Welcome to my restaurant. What do you, would you like to eat today? Um, you want a hot dog, some drinky burgers. You want a hot dog, a burger, anything to drink? Milk. Milk? Now that he understands the different roles, they're going on an outing to a real restaurant to see if he can implement what he's learned through play. Jack Riley. Where are we going? To the restaurant. To the what? Restaurant. Restaurant. You're not saying the word, really. We're going to the restaurant. Thank you. Come on, Suzanne. Okay, I'm coming. Have you gone to a restaurant with Jack Riley recently? Not recently. Uh, it's been quite a while, actually, so we've been sort of excited because we haven't gone since uh, he's been sort of playing restaurant at home. I'm going to add the lighting some pie. This here's breakfast. These are good breakfasts right here. Uh, and there's all of us at the top of that. Yeah, can, those are burgers and pizza and stuff, but we want to have breakfast, I think. And there's mm, uh, a nice curry on the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like the restaurant so far? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, there's, and there's coffee that you want to drink. Daddy wants to drink. What do you want? What do you want? Um, I want a pizza. 
me some pie. I think we're not going to have pie. We'll, we'll come back for dinner and have pie, okay? Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Can Fine. Thank you. Can I get your drinks? Can Fine. I, can I have a... No. I want... I want a blueberry and waffles, please. <laughs> Good order, Jeff Riley. You ordered all by yourself. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. And I wanted... So... And I wanted that... Yummy, yummy, mm. real blueberries. Oh, Look at this. Blueberries. Special, Special order. It has yogurt. Yeah. Say thank you, Jack. Oh, no, that's even better than yogurt. Say thank you. Thank you. Great appetite. Yeah. Wow. I can't even finish all that. You are a growing boy. Can we sit better? Can we sit better, buddy? Right. You can turn it to your face. There it is. There you go. I just FYI, this is for the whole whole thing. Do you want to eat more or do you want to be done? Eat. Okay. Do it, please. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Welcome back to Autism Live. I told you we had a parade of guests today. And so, number three of the four. Uh, the fabulous Matt Asner, autism dad extraordinaire, and also the executive director of the Southern California Autism Speaks chapter. So you're getting used to that. So now I, it's it's, it's, it's not a problem anymore. Yes, I like that. it's a mouthful though. <laughs> it's a big mouthful. It is. And you you were on last Thursday, and you started. To, we were in the middle of the great shakeout, and we were sitting on tenter hooks waiting for that. And you started to tell the story of when your son was nearly abducted, yes. and we we didn't have time because of the shakeout. But we said you were going to come back on Tuesday. Day, so you must tell us. I've worried about this a little bit all weekend long. It was, it was, it was um, probably the, the scariest someone's calling me right now. <laughs> <laughs> they, it, they're probably calling they, to tell you that you're they, on Autism Live. Hey, oh my gosh, wow. Do you know that? <laughs> um, okay. So basically, uh, it was the scariest day of my life. <sighs> and um, we, uh, I took my kids out. We, uh, we walked down to a yogurt shop, which is kind of near our house. And um, we took the dog with us. Mm -hmm. And both kids, uh, my son is, uh, my son Jake was probably 12 at the time. And uh, Will was nine. Uh, and, um, I, you know, they both wanted to sit outside with the dog. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, that's fine, you know, because it, it, it was fine. So they sat um, right at the entrance of the, um, of the yogurt shop. Mm -hmm. And I went in and I started getting all the stuff together and all the goodies. And uh, all of a sudden I turn around and I see Jake, my oldest son, walk in. And I thought, what? Why are you walking in? And right behind him there was a woman. And she's walking in, she looked very concerned. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, is that your son out there? I said, yeah. Uh, and she said, well, he's going off with some guy. Oh my. And I thought, oh geez. So I ran outside and um, uh, he was halfway inside a van. Oh my goodness. And I pulled him out and I, and I looked at the guy and I said, you wait right here, don't go anywhere. And I took Will to safety. I put him inside the yogurt shop and I told the yogurt shop, I said, keep him in here, just keep him in here. I went outside, by the time I got outside, he was gone. Yeah. So, we live in a society, we were talking about this the other day, we live in a society where we have video everywhere. So they actually got him on video. Wow. Uh, and I asked my son, I said, what did, he, what did he want from you? What did he tell you? What did he tell you? Yeah. And he said, well, he came, you know, and as best he could, he said, he came, he came up to me and said, he, you know, he liked my dog mm -hmm. and he wanted to show me his dog. And so, you know, I don't know, you know, yeah. and, and the cop, you know, the cops came that night and I was, I, I honestly I, I was close to being physically ill because those moments where you just think, you know, what if yeah. that had happened? And yeah. it was just one of those things you never, ever think you're going to be involved in. Yeah. And it just, it really throws you for a loop. Um, but the cops got there uh, and they said, oh, do you really think this guy was, uh, are you kidding you, me? Th yeah, seriously. And I'm like, are you kidding? It's textbook. And I said, and I said, look, he's either a pedophile or he's the dumbest son of a bitch on the planet. Yeah. And either way, you're, you're going to have to, you know, teach him a lesson and find him and, and, and figure this out because, you know, what if it happens to someone else? What if it, what if, you know, the dad doesn't come out? Yeah. You know, uh, so, um, a couple months went by, uh, and they, 
you know, they were pretty good at contacting us and figuring things out. Um, and, you know, we did a, um, they did get the video, so they got him inside, he was inside the yogurt shop before that. Uh, and um, they did, we did a lineup. And, um, of course, uh, Will did not ID him because it was just, you know, this perils of having, having a son with autism, yeah. just the details weren't there. Right. Um, but I did ID him. Yay. So, but I honestly have no idea what happened because I never got called to testify at a trial or anything. So. Wow. Um, but um, it was uh, a horrible moment, but it taught me a huge lesson, huge, huge lesson that um, you just can't not know what's going on yeah. for even 30 seconds yeah. um, because he's so trusting that he would he would go with anyone if he come if someone came up and said and you know it doesn't matter I mean we've talked to him and talked to him and talked to him and talked to him and that's one of the things it's it's just you know he has a short circuit there yeah and and, and it, you know we're working with him you know behavioral therapy right. and stuff like that and but it's hard it's difficult because it difficult. it's very tough to break that you know that feeling that that instant like you know I have some candy oh, okay I'm gonna go with you yeah oh I have a dog oh I'm gonna go with you um, so and as a matter of fact I think the most difficult part of it is you know setting boundaries and rules with your family so if you have, if they have grandparents, and the grandparents are going to take the, the kids, you know, how, you have to really stress to them how dangerous the situation is yeah. and how different the situation is. Absolutely. Um, and uh, most people don't understand it. So we were, we were driving up, um, we were driving up to San Francisco once and I was with my mom and uh, we were uh, at a, a gas station in the middle of nowhere. You know, one of those things you look at and you think, who lives out here, you know, and, um, we were in the, the service in the mini mart section of it and my son is fascinated with bathrooms just has a natural fascination with bathrooms always wants to go there and check it out and yeah you know it. that's not uncommon Spend quality time yeah in the bathroom that's not uncommon so, on the spectrum no i know yeah I know. it's and, very common and i mean he'll have me look up like uh he's interested in black toilets i don't know why oh. Don't know why. I've got a house he can go to. Black toilets. <laughs> so um, I'll do actually a search on YouTube. I have to look at what's there first. Okay. Because I don't know what's there. Right. Uh, but that's, you know, kind okay. of what he's into. <laughs> but, All right. but he, he, you know, he, he wanted to go to the bathroom. My, my mom was like buying them some treats. Uh, and I, you know, I was filling the, the car up. And I, and I came back uh, into the store after filling the car up. And Jake, Jake was there, my mom was there, and Will was gone. And I thought, I looked at my mom and I said, this is after the, the, the thing with at uh. the yogurt shop. And I said to my mom, I said, what are you doing? What, what, where is he? And I don't, I, I don't know. He's got to be around here somewhere. Oh, my goodness. And, and he wasn't. And so I, I'm flipping out. And I yeah. go outside. And, of course, he had gone around the side of the building, all the way around the side of the building by himself, and was looking uh, at the bathroom. So, you know, it's... it's um, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you just have to know where they are all the time. Yeah. It's, but you're also, you mentioned you're working on safety issues. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's the thing. I mean, I think that both those things together, it's important that we that we all acknowledge that, that you got to work on things, but you still have to be so diligent. You have I to think do it all the time. Sometimes people go, well, we're working on it, and then they don't feel that they have to be as diligent. And no, it's you have to be, be both. It's you have to be on be top both. of it. Yeah. Uh, but, and the thing, I think the thing that, that is most frustrating is that he constantly does it. Yeah. And, and it's very, very difficult to break that mold, to yeah. say, uh, to have them completely understand what's really going on there. Yeah, absolutely. Because really he's, difficult. you know, he's uh, an innocent. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take a short break, but we're going to talk about this a little bit more, and we're going to bring Alex Plank back in Great. so that Alex is going to be here and discuss this, the three of us. So Great. stick with us more after these messages. Monica Holloway is a critically acclaimed author, speaker, and activist. She is also an autism mom. Her son, Wills, was diagnosed with autism at the age of three. Now, at the age of 15, Wills is a high school freshman attending a mainstream school. I'm in a brand new school. I'm in a great school that I love, and I'm really happy there. I made friends pretty quickly on the first day, uh -huh. and something interesting happened to me on the first day. Tell me. We were doing an art project with... Um, fabric markers and there was a little label on it that said 
squeeze for best results. Okay. And so I squeezed it and exploded <laughs> all over the people at my table. Oh no! And they were all covered in little blue dots. I asked Wills how he describes autism to people. I say that I have Asperger's syndrome, which is a slight form of autism. It doesn't make you any different. It really doesn't. It's just, it's just there and it just kind of makes you who you are. I asked Wills what he thought of the Sandy Hook shooter's actions being linked to autism. Please, please, just don't, don't be scared of autism. If, you, if somebody has autism, don't be scared of them. Chances are they're not violent. They're just like you or me. Monica is a proud mom with good cause. I asked her to describe Wills in five words. Generous, curious, funny, sensitive, loving. We had a chance to talk about the Sandy Hook massacre and how Monica heard the news. On Friday, when it happened, when the shooting happened in Connecticut, I was in my car and uh, my husband Michael called to tell me what had happened. And I was in a state of shock, as I think we all were, but that many children. And I felt, I guess, a mind can't take in that kind of information uh, without feeling nauseous. I, I felt it go from here all the way down my body. I started calling everybody I knew to tell them I loved them and um, I was thinking about them, and I just wanted to be with the people that I knew. I started hearing more and more um, information come on the news about this shooter having Asperger's or being autistic. And then I started hearing things about, um, well, does autism cause violence? And I started, to, I was in a whole other level of shock. Never in a million years would I think that somebody might associate us and my son's face with the face of violence just because he has Asperger's. And I've seen bad days and good days and that's what kills me is like there was not a day bad enough to ever make me think that he or any of his friends could ever be violent. The only thing that made me even feel a little bit better to do something to help educate. And so we've started a campaign on my Facebook page, Cowboy and Wills, it's called I Am the Face of Autism. And please post a picture of yourself. It can be your child, your friend with autism. Let's put these beautiful faces of these people with autism on to wipe out the face of this murderer. Let's put our faces in front of his. Welcome back to Autism Live. I feel like we have the who's who of autism on today. Take a look at this. These two handsome I... men sitting here, Alex Plank and Matt Asner. So thrilled to have you both together. Thanks Wait a minute, you me. looked at me like, like oh, is she serious? <laughs> who totally are you doubting? Serious. Are you doubting me? I was or just you checking you? to make sure I didn't look to you. <laughs> <laughs> I have an aversion to eye contact. I love Alex. Alex is Who doesn't one of my love Alex? People. But Alex loves to devil me. We talked about this earlier this morning, that Alex takes takes great pleasure in making my life difficult. Right, Alex? <laughs> no, I never said that. You you said that I and I and I you. disagreed. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that grin that he has on his face. It, it tells the whole picture. Uh, Alex likes to make my life difficult. Alex is joining us on Thursday night. Yes. So he's going to he's going to be a presenter at the Blue Jean Ball. But what is he presenting? Because we talked about this and he awareness. Did, no, awareness. Yes. He's, okay. he's uh, presenting our our uh, we the have pillars. four pillar videos. Yes. And he, the pillar that he's presenting is um, is awareness, and he's doing it with Diane Kruger. So there you go. He, when he said he was introducing one of the pillars, I thought like it was a person. No. No, no. And and then we had a whole discussion about. It. She thought that so, I should be the pillar. I think he is a pillar. <laughs> he is a of pillar. Autism. Thank Absolutely. you. See, I'm not wrong. Um, so is it five seen, pillars of autism? Yeah. Have you ever seen his? <laughs> have, 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 you, have you ever seen his dating video? Yes. <laughs> the flirting. Yeah. It's one of the greatest things in the world. I know. Seriously, isn't it? Yes. And also, I mean, I'm a big fan of the bullying one too. I, yeah. That was a game changer for us. I agree. Uh, so he makes some incredible videos. He's I think an so. incredibly talented young man. We have man a whole queue of them that we've done, including yes. including one on the bridge, another one on the bridge where yes. we interview more cast people, uh, one from the walk, uh -huh. from the last walk, which we still have yeah. on our backlog, but I figured that we, we haven't, haven't put that up yet. Huh? Yeah, we haven't gotten that one up wow. yet. Yeah. So people should go to wrongplanet.net to check that out, and we're all big fans of yours. But we were talking before with Matt about when his son was almost abducted. Could you hear that out in the I did. I, I will listen to the whole story. It was uh, incredibly scary. Isn't it? And, and I'm wondering, did your parents have difficulty with you? Did you ever, were you one of those trusting kids who would be willing to walk away with somebody? Did your mom 
mom talk about fears that she was going to lose you? Well, my mom told me a story about one time where a stranger offered her and her f her friend candy. And so they got in the car, and they, I think they ended up jumping out of the car at some oh point. Oh, my goodness. This is when she was a kid? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so, I, so I think that that scared me enough. That so he just hearing that story scared you, and you didn't want to be... Oh, God. I, I, was, I was scared of strangers. Yeah. Well, I find that a lot but of I'm times friendly. it's one or the other with kids, that my son was very trusting, and I... You know, being the overprotective mom just heaped story after story after story about strangers. And then he became so afraid that he wouldn't talk to strangers. Now we try to find the happy mix, but it's it's difficult. It's a difficult thing to teach. You were mentioning that you guys have been going out into the field, so to speak, to work well, on things. Well, well, I think what's interesting, you know, especially with Will, Will's such a fascinating creature. I mean, he really is. He's, he, um, he'll, he'll talk to someone. And he'll say, "Are you a stranger?" Yeah. You know, and 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 th that interaction will happen, and in, and during that interaction, he will realize during that interaction that they're no longer strangers. Mm. Exactly. And so, so it's all you know. We all speak in code. Yeah. I mean, it's all big code, right? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, there's no. So, I mean, technically, I mean, I I when I was a kid, I just talked to everyone, and my mom would talk to you know everyone at the grocery store, right. and I mean, we grew up in, I guess, a small town. Yeah. But. There's a differentiation that it's harder to make when you have that blurry line. Yeah. Well, and it is a blurry line. It is a blurry because, line. Because I think we're all afraid to, to, to be uh, explicit. Right. We're afraid to tell it as it is. Right. So, you know, we change Cause things. Because it's profiling. So we, yeah, and we change things. And we change things. So mm -hmm. we change, um, we, we make codes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and certainly I think in, uh, uh, when we talk about like anything sexual, which is certainly something that you have to talk about, right. especially with strangers, you know, danger, you know, Absolutely. of strangers. Um, we talk in code, you know, um, and, and if you're, you know Peter Gerhardt is, right? Yes. <laughs> He's, I saw him at um, the help group a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and He's I was amazing. really impressed by him. And he's he, you know, he's talking all about this code and about how you can't talk in code. You can't. You have yeah. to be completely open about sexuality and and what it is. And you know, he was talking about private parts, mm -hmm. which is a really simple, very innocent term. Right. And you're talking about private parts, uh, and 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 it's like, well, if those are private parts, what is this? Right. You know, and it's like. A public part, you know, uh, must be the opposite. So sure. it's just fascinating to me because I never thought about that. I never yeah. thought that um, that could be thought. You know, that take it, yeah. speaking in code would be yeah. maybe possibly even dangerous. Absolutely. Do you know who helped me a little bit before I even had a child was Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell really? talked on her show once about teaching her oldest son about stranger danger and that she would talk about strangers and you don't talk to strangers and you don't talk to strangers. But their doorman of their building, her son would talk to him. Right. And, and because he wasn't a stranger. And once you talk to somebody, they're not a stranger. Exactly. And so she started instituting a policy with her son where she would say to people now this person is a stranger but because you're here with me I can talk to him and you can talk to him but he's still a stranger and we're still talking to him she's incredibly perceptive of how isn't that do amazing that. I was on uh, the view uh, a while ago and she actually was talking about the fact that she might have autism and really and then she that, that, decided that, 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 to Rose, have Rosie O'Donnell yeah and then yeah. she had John on her show and they and they uh talked about it and you're talking about John Elder Robinson John Elder, yeah John Elder Robinson was on her show and and uh, she mentioned our autism talk TV and very yeah. cool yeah. very cool well I know she has always been a champion of autism causes and yeah. uh, you know she's a very outspoken uh, she made it possible on the view for them to do a whole series on autism that was very informative um, but, you know, that. that particular conversation, talking about stranger danger, had nothing to do with autism. But I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, how confusing is it for kids when we say stranger and yet we talk to strangers all the time in front of them. It's and crazy. And we don't I mean, label when you them. Really think, when you really think about it, it, it just crazy. doesn't make any sense. Because yeah. we... You have these mixed messages. No, of course. Confuses. All the time. All Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. And, but how do you how do you uh, how do you escape that? How do you get around that? You yeah. can't really because it's the way we live. Right. So... 
you know, it's it's um, a very difficult situation. Absolutely. Yeah. But being mindful of it, I think, is really important. We should take another short break, and then we'll come back and talk some more with these two fascinating gentlemen. Stick with us. Skills is an online program that provides assessment, curriculum, positive behavior support planning for challenging behavior, and progress tracking, and it does this all in one place. The skills assessment and curriculum addresses eight areas of development, which even includes advanced higher level areas such as executive functions and cognition, which pretty much makes skills the only ABA-based set of curricula for teaching more complex skills, things like problem solving, planning, self-management, perspective taking, and even inferring and predicting others' private events. Skills is a four-step system. Step one is to add the child to your account. Step two is to start assessment. The skills assessment is the only ABA-based assessment with psychometric research demonstrating the language subscale to have excellent reliability. Every area of human functioning and typical child development from infancy to adolescence was researched, making the skills assessment the most comprehensive of its kind in the world, and we're quite proud of that. Skills is easy to use. Simply click Start Assessment and begin answering questions, or simply type in a keyword find specific activities to assess, and add activities to treatment. Step 3. Choose activities. Once you've completed the assessment, Skills selects from a pool of 4,000 activities categorized by age, level, and skill type to provide you with exactly those activities each child needs. Start by choosing a curriculum, then a lesson, and finally an activity. Click the information icon to view prerequisites, ages in which targets develop, examples, and IEP goals. Click the video icon to watch a short video. Once you've identified an activity you want to teach, adding activities to treatment is a snap. Step 4. Start treatment. Here you can access customizable activity lesson details, add your own customized targets and exemplars, and edit an activity status such as introducing or mastering it. You can even print handouts such as worksheets, tracking forms, visual aids, and other materials. Skills also offers multiple progress charts, mapping curriculum progress, lesson progress, and cumulative number of activities and targets mastered over time. The Skills Language Curriculum is categorized by verbal behavior type so that users can identify progress for verbal operants, such as echoics, mans, tax, and interverbals. Skills is one of the only programs that provides the ability to write behavior intervention plans, or BIPs, for challenging behavior. With just a few clicks, the outline of the behavior intervention plan is written for you and ready to be printed and implemented. You can learn more about Skills today and get started by visiting us at www.skillsforautism.com or you can call us at 877-975-4559. Skills. Progress starts here. Welcome back to Autism Live. In the studio here with me, I said it's the who's who of autism. We have Alex Plank from wrongplanet.net. We have Matt Asner, who is the executive director of the Southern California chapter of Autism Speaks. So two very impressive gentlemen, and you're, all, you're both going to be at the same place on Thursday. Where are you going to be, Matt? We are. It's not often that we get to be in the same place at the same time, but... Not, not often enough. <laughs> but for this sure. time we are. Uh, we're going to be at the Blue Jean Ball uh, for Autism Speaks. Uh, it's going to be an amazing night. It's at Boulevard 3. Starts at 7 o'clock. Tickets are still available, although selling out very quickly. Okay. Um, and it's going to... We're honoring Chuck Saffler, who's one of the greatest people in the world, uh, as you know. Yeah, he hooked me up with the you, job. You're with, gainfully uh, employed yeah. because of him, yeah. which is great. Uh, not because of him, but because of you. Which job did he hook you up with? Why, he's the guy who called me about the consulting thing. Oh, he, for the bridge. He wanted a consultant on the show. and Awesome. Awesome. Chuck's an amazing guy. Great. You should have him. You should have him. All right. Oh, yeah, that would be I'll great. Sure yeah, he'd you know, he be amazing. Okay. Um, so Chuck is the honoree, um, and uh, Alex is going to uh, present uh, one of the pillars uh, with <laughs> Diane Kruger. Okay. Uh, and um, we have an amazing amount of people there. We have Dave Grohl is uh, going to perform, uh, Ryan Bingham, uh, who does the theme song for The Bridge, uh, and also is an Academy Award winner. Uh, we have uh, James Durbin from Lovely. American Idol, yes. who uh, has autism or Asperger's yes. and Tourette syndrome as yes. well. Um, and, uh, and we should talk about Tourette syndrome some, someday. Yes, um, we need to. Yeah, and then uh, we also have the White Buffalo, who is an incredible new artist, yeah. uh, amazing new artist, and Rick Springfield. Ah. 
How amazing so, is that? So, I mean, what a, what a lineup. You, you, I'm, I'm, that's lineup. truly amazing. Right? That's a really exciting lineup. I didn't realize it was more of a concert. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's it's great. It's a straight concert. You know, people come. There is food. There'll be hors d'oeuvres, and there's lots to drink. It's going to be just an evening of incredible fun and great music. And it's raising money. Raising money for... Yeah, for the beats. pillars. For the pillars. And tell us what the pillars are. The pillars are research and science, family services, awareness, and advocacy. Okay. So yeah. those are the four pillars. How can people get tickets? Where do they need to go? They can go to, uh, of course, uh, they can go to autism speaks uh, backslash uh, dot org slash events. Okay. Uh, Blue Jean Ball. And uh, they can order tickets there. Or they can call um, the main number uh, in the office here. If you type it's autism speaks Blue Jean Ball into Google, it'll take you. It'll just take you right there. Okay. All right, great. That's, that's probably the easiest. And that's thing. a really easy way to find that. that okay, is. and so and if they're there, people can meet the both of you. They can. We'll be we'll be milling around and saying hi to people, and uh, there's going to be an amazing amount of wonderful you know people there. Diane Kruger's going to be there. Okay. Uh, I know. Um, uh, um, Dave Grohl, all those people right. I mentioned. A lot of uh, people from FX are going to be there. All the FX shows Very are going to cool. be there. Um, Joanna Krupp is going to be there. Who I, you know, I, I'd fun. like to meet her. I don't know. <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> okay, so people can get tickets. There's still a few tickets, but they're you're selling out fast. It's in two yeah. days. If you want tickets, you got to do that very quickly. Yes. All right, we're going to take a break and we're going to say goodbye to Alex for today's show. Um, we're going to be coming back with Stuart Duncan, a, a dad blogger who is truly amazing, but has created something called Autcraft that I I'm so excited about this. This is been on my wish list of things to have happen. Now, Matt, you're going to stay with us for that, right? Yeah, because I can I can be the the counterpoint because I, I don't actually get Minecraft. So yeah. well, hey, I no, hey, there's nothing to get. You just build blocks. That's I'm not sure that I get it, it's but like I see Legos my child's eyes blaze know. over it. Well, exactly, it is like Legos, but it's like yeah. virtual Legos with all kinds of different interaction, and it, it can be a very social thing that can be very scary. Because you go, you're in a world, right? There's you're monsters. In a world. There's monsters. And but you're in a world. Be, it's like you can a be talking open... to other people. People. It's an open world, right? Yes, and okay. you, you can be talking to other people, which my son has been on Minecraft now, and I'm frightened sometimes by the people he runs into on Minecraft. So I've been wishing for a place that, a, that would be safe. But see, that's not a bad place to be then, I guess, uh, to teach him about uh, you know the world. Right. right? Maybe. But then you want to monitor it constantly. Instead, Stuart has created a, a safer place in which our kids can interact, and we can build on those safety skills in that environment, which I'm excited about. So we're going to come back with Stuart via Skype and Matt Asner will be staying but we'll say goodbye to Alex and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. All right. So stick with us more after Where's these my messages. Hug? Nick was diagnosed with autism in 1994 at the age of four. He received five years of therapy from CARD that eventually faded out. Nick recovered from autism in 2001. This time I'm about to perform this by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. CARD helped many patients, myself, to recover to this level now. Cheryl and Mike's son, Jack Riley, was diagnosed with autism in 2010 at age two. He's been receiving therapy from CARD for a year and a half. Today, Cheryl, Mike, and Nick meet for the first time. I'm curious as to what you remember. I certainly remember pretty long sessions, and I'd be frustrated if I would make mistakes. I mean, I remember one time I had to count a row of six blocks, kept messing up. That was really difficult. No. I need you, I need it. At what point do you recall hearing the word autism? I was able to figure out what I was going through without anybody having to tell me. Our concern is if it's a big secret to hide. I don't know what, what we can no say. No one ever told you, you just, you just yeah. discerned But the it. reason I'm comfortable talking about this is because I felt it. In therapy, I began, I certainly began questioning why you know, people reacted as they did based on what I said and did. Particularly because of difficulties I was facing in school, I just, it got to a point where I wanted to understand why it was. So I entered while still um, going through therapy and still showing significant signs of the mental condition. Even after I'd improved to a significant extent, there were those who still gave me a hard time for it. 
Did it hurt your feelings when you were in school, the way it that did. kids? Oh, absolutely, because it was bullying, it was harassment. That scares us. That, they called me names. They, I was basically, when it came to sports and PE, I was usually the last kid chosen. Did yeah. teachers intervene? Um, fortunately, not really. I mean, it was just so hard for me to talk about it because of how ashamed I felt. You know, certainly the first few years of elementary school, I don't think I really had the most supportive teachers. I mean. I remember, I, my mom told me how my first grade teacher once said that she thought I had no chance of getting anywhere and going away to college and out of state and being the only person um, for my old school district has made a difference and it's just really improved my you social life tremendously because stuff. I got to be me because with nobody knowing about my past I wasn't faced with these um, misconceptions and prejudgments. Do you tell people, new people that you meet? No, that's not the first thing I will ever tell. No, I would hope tell. it's not the first and thing. And you know what? But... In most cases, I never do because while it's a part of my past, it doesn't define who I am. I mean, just thinking back, just thinking back to the very beginning, pretty much each episode, autism, what, not who. I want to tell you right now, though, uh, I'm so impressed with you. Likewise. I want you to know that. Likewise. I mean, um, your, your son really inspires me just good, as much good, because... Good, good. I'll tell you any time. I, I adore him, and, yeah. and, and but I'd be lying if I, I, I said it wasn't challenging. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it's 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 cost me my 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 the stuff that uh, you know, like career things, mm -hmm. goals. I don't care about those anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I work at night. I'm tending bar. Mm -hmm. um, not that I'm too good for that. I'm just saying that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I want him to have a chance, right? And uh, you, you inspire me now. Thank you. The feeling goes both ways. The feeling's mutual. Before you leave today, we would like you to meet Jack. I would love to. This is Nick. Hi, Nick. Hey, Jack Riley. All right, should we try this? I'm gonna try to take a picture of all of you. One, two, and three. <laughs> Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm here live in the studio with Matt Asner, an autism dad, and we have joining us via Skype, Stuart Duncan, who is another autism dad. Stuart, this is your first time being on the show. Welcome to Autism Live. Thanks for having me on. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Our audience may be familiar with you because you are a blogger who has a huge audience. Your blog, Autism from a Father's Point of View, has been around for a long time. You write beautiful blogs. And we're, we're thrilled to, to have you here. We, we would love to talk about that, but actually this week we're talking about technology. So we've asked you to come and talk with us about Autcraft. This is, I, I swear it's like early Christmas for me as a parent, <laughs> because I, this has been on my list of things I've been saying, why doesn't somebody do this? And, and you've done it. So tell us what Autcraft is. Well, it's essentially, it's, it's a Minecraft server and when we first announced it, everybody says, so what's different? It's a Minecraft server. They're all the same. Um, ours is very specifically for children with autism and their families. But we, we monitor it a lot more closely than most others. Um, we don't allow any bullying or any name calling or even swearing. Um, we even try to keep a lot of slang out that we can, but obviously slang is slang. Um, but we also take the extra um, steps to protect each person's property so it can be destroyed and, and nobody can take their mm. things and we track everything so if it does happen we can go and see what was taken and what was done and and we just we let the children know not to get mad you know somebody breaks one of their windows in their house or something don't get mad don't worry about who did it we'll fix it and we'll make everything better and we'll talk to the, the child that did it and probably even his parents and, and they'll find out what they did wrong and everything will be fine now we have a perfect opportunity here because yes I am a newbie I don't you know I, I my nephew I he He's like crazy about Minecraft, like really crazy. Uh, and, but I, my kids uh, kind of it just passed them up. I, I'm not sure they just aren't into it. Um, can you tell me um, it, exactly what it is and and what's entailed? Uh, yeah. Like if I if I'm signing up for Minecraft, what happens or Oddcraft? 
Well, it's, yeah, I don't think anybody can tell you exactly what it is, which is the beauty of it. It's like autism. It's, oh, that makes, uh, yeah. now, now I know, okay. <laughs> it, it really is, and I think that's what a part of the big appeal is for autistic, well, for everybody, but for autistics is, it's a, it's considered a sandbox game, which okay. means that you, you sign in and you're surrounded maybe by trees, maybe by mountains, maybe there's some, like, you don't know. You're just in the world and you can do anything you want. And it is kind of like Legos, you just, you go and punch some wood and and, and, get, mm -hmm. and build some blocks and all of a sudden you have a house but it's so much more than that there's animals that you can breed and um, you can kill them for their food uh, so, so it's really so it's a it's a it's a living it's it's basically a living world that that you know is, where where yeah. there's there's danger out there there's there's a and it, it's very interesting that's it, very it's interesting. fascinating huh. it it's, is and even there's some ores in the game like you go mining and you get iron and stuff there's some that um, allow you to do like electrical circuits and things like like that so you can start building contraptions and machines and things and there's really? some kids that are on our server that just build the most mind-blowing things that you walk over and press a button and it does a whole bunch of work and you're like how, how did where did you come up with this from well w one of the amazing things for me is you know and I'll use my nephew as an example um, you know he's he's got like a PlayStation 3 he has you know all this gaming stuff you know he's a gamer uh, a young gamer, but a gamer, um, and and he always gravitates towards Minecraft, which is amazing to me because I look at you know I look at it and I'm like oh that's kind of crude you know and when I say crude I don't mean crude I mean um, yeah, it, you know it's, it's like it's, it's not a bit textures yeah it's like not things. elaborate it's not an elaborate landscape uh, like you'd see in in, in like uh, Grand Theft Auto or whatever you know yeah. it's it's uh, it's this kind of crude crudely you know done. Uh, world, but that said, he's like totally into it. It's yeah. amazing yeah. to me. Well, to, to go back to the the similarity with Legos, um, Legos are still in. Mm -hmm. And how long have they been around? And it's and that's because it's the power of your imagination. With games like on your Xbox or PlayStation or whatever, you pop the disc in and you play it until. Well, not until the disc ends, but the game has an end. Like you right. play it, and and you've found all the hidden things, and you've killed the boss, and and your mind is blown. But then you put the disc away, whereas with Minecraft and Legos and some of the like the uh, the online multiplayer game, the MMORPGs, um, there's no end, and yeah. your imagination is the limit. It's fascinating. So uh, we're going to talk more about about this. But Stuart, tell people where they need to go to sign up if they want their child to play in Autcraft. Yeah, it's um, Autcraft.com. A U T C R A F T. Um, I, I named it that because obviously it's for autism, but I also put the tagline, um, replace your ism with a craft. So instead of, you know, not to replace autism, but replace the ism part of it, the icky ism, and, and do what you love, which is, a, you know, your craft. I, put the two together. I just love it. <laughs> and we do want to tell people that it takes a couple of days once they go there and request to get on in order for, because it's just you and you're uploading the, the individual people. Yeah, so there's, there's a, a form time on there. Work. There's a form on there with, you know, you put in your username, but you can put in your whole family's name. We encourage you, you know, mom, dad. So we even have a, um, grandparents playing. Um, but if we got a lot more popular than we expected. I think I got 2,000 requests in less than a week. Yeah. Um, just in the last week or so. And that's because I've been reaching out to some of the more popular Minecraft players, and they've been coming to visit our, our kids and, and stuff like that. So it's become really popular. It's popular, it Stuart, because it's a really good idea. So wait a minute. There, there's, there are popular Minecraft players? There are, the number the number one most viewed account on YouTube um, for 2012 is Sky does Minecraft. He has six million subscribers who watch him play the game. You're kidding me. No, this is huge. This is big. That's been, incredible. Yes. I, I'm, All right, so boy, we're, we're going to talk. i babe in the woods. There I'm you a go. babe in the woods, Stuart. Well, we're going to talk more about this because I have questions, and, and now you're going to be my Minecraft expert, Stuart. So stick with us. More with Stuart Duncan after these messages. Hello there, fellow activist. You're an activist because you're making the world a better place for someone living with autism. Now on Autism Live, you learn all about your children. You learn about their bodies and their brains. But this empowerment moment is all about you. It's about your heart and your soul. 
Now don't worry, I'm not gonna have you start singing Kumbaya or doing chanting. Let's talk about blessings. One of the blessings of living with a child with autism is learning to love them unconditionally. Learning to love them despite all the ups and downs, all the sacrifices. In fact, you learn to love them more so because of them. I call this my empowerment prayer. God grant me the wisdom to see my disability as an opportunity, the courage to love my child unconditionally, and the faith to live a life of purpose. So going from the sublime to the ridiculous, I have a little song for you today. It's a rap song, so I know that an old or, okay, middle-aged white woman rapping just doesn't seem right, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. My style is a little like Nicki Minaj meets Dr. Seuss. Nancy's Autism Rap. It's just a diagnosis, your life's not over. Don't lay there like a dog, get up, Rover. You say your head is spinning with GF, CF, ABA, IEPs, and neurofeedback? Autism tough, that much is true. But you'll survive because you're you. Your life's not over, it's just begun. So walk out that door and go be someone. More Dr. Seuss than Nicki Minaj. Until next time. Stay strong and keep the faith. Welcome back to Autism Live. We have with us in the studio Matt Asner, Autism Dad, and via Skype we have Stuart Duncan, Autism Dad. And we're blowing Matt Asner's mind describing what Minecraft is because yeah. you're really getting an education. And my son loves Minecraft, but Stuart, I've had this problem that he would play it endlessly. I can't monitor it continuously because at some point I got to do laundry and get dinner on the table and, you know, work and do all these other things. And I've seen him interact some earlier it would be that he would build something spend all this time building it and somebody would come along and burn it to the ground or steal his stuff and he'd be right. furious and angry and crying and despondent so you can be you, you can be jack, jacked up like that you or? can really because yeah. strangers are in there or they come in and, and he has a conversation with somebody and I don't like the conversation and people hit each other in the game and I don't like that. And you've taken care of all of that for me, Stuart. Tell the folks at home about what they can and cannot do on Autcraft. Certainly. Um, well, we have admins in at all times. Um, we, I have seven admins with me, so there's always, and they're volunteer parents. They have children with autism and, and they know autism well, so they're there and they talk to people and ask them, we, you know, we don't, if ever somebody does something so bad, um, we will ban them, but for only one day or until we hear from their parents. Okay. And that's it. And then they're welcome back. Um, is it, is it, is it, is there's, no, there's, there's no PvP. Uh, people can't hit each other except for one special place, which is our PvP arena. Okay. And we only open that when we're there. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, um, it, I, 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 once again, I'm ask. new to this. So, yeah, so ask. Is, is, um, is that a problem? I mean, is bullying a problem in this cyber world? Yes. In, I, that's where that's where it came from. My the Autcraft is because I I love Minecraft. My son loves Minecraft. Both my boys do. Um, and I talked to all these people who love Minecraft, and every single person had a horror story because their their children aren't ready for the social aspects of it yet and they sign in and they they talk about what they love which might be you know trees or frogs or bugs or whatever bathrooms and the kids pick on yes. them for it and yep. and it's just it, it's always and i mean especially for an autistic child who anywhere on the spectrum is just is devastating it's so heartbreaking and, well, uh, yeah, it can produce a um, pretty good meltdown, I, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. And it actually, believe it or not, it kind of makes my job a little bit more difficult because I screen every single name that comes in. I search through Google and the databases that Minecraft has and stuff like that. And the majority of them actually have previous bans on other servers. You're and I'm kidding. looking at them going, you know, do I let this person in because, you know, they have did, did this damage on these other servers? But most of them I can tell that it wasn't intentional damage. A lot of the times the autistic children are the ones that are getting banned for destroying other yeah. people's stuff only because they didn't understand the, right. the social constructs. Absolutely. I mean, my, my son was playing and you talked earlier about how sometimes you give misinformation and somebody burned down his whole village and he was so upset and crying about it. And I said, honey, this is the game. This is what people do and you can build it again. So then we went on a play date where he was doing Minecraft with, with kids at the same time and he burned somebody 
somebody's village down oh, and they no. never wanted to play with them again. So, you know, I, I think having a forum in which they can play and play safely and play nicely and know that nobody's going to do that to them causes them to play in a way that makes it easier when they go in to play with other people. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. That's amazing. Um, how, many, how many users do you have? So far, active active players that have actually signed in, we have about a thousand now. Wow! Um, and we just passed on our white list because you have to have you have to be approved to be on. We just passed a seventeen hundred mark. Well, I just think it's amazing, Stuart. I, I was saying to you earlier that I I appreciate the fact that it currently is free. I can't imagine that it can stay that way forever. Um, but it is free at this moment in time. Um, and you mentioned that there are a couple of things within the game that there, we were talking about it during the break, that if you, uh, you can fly, but there's a, a cost for flying. But we all agreed we would pay the dollar to fly because we think it's a really cool thing. I think I would pay $5 to fly. There you go. Yeah. Matt Asner I has said he'd pay $5 for flying. I think it's really incredible and I'm just so uh, glad to have an opportunity to talk about it with you and and I, I just want to say how amazing autism parents are because you see a need and you fulfilled it and it's early Christmas for me when, when, when that when that report came out um, the phone call survey remember that everybody started screaming it was one in 50 because they phoned some parents and everybody yeah. was all worried about it yeah I, I wrote about that saying you know that's terrible it was a phone survey where most parents didn't even answer but at the same time it's kind of good that it's, it's it's scaring some of these parents because it's the parents that create the gymnastic programs and the skate programs and and art craft and stuff like that and I, I don't right. want anybody to be yeah. scared but there's a positive that comes out of it and like you said autism parents they'll they'll jump to the punch and they'll get stuff done well Very true. you are one of those parents Stuart I thank you so much can, will you be our our Minecraft uh, consultant so that we can talk to you from time to time Absolutely, certainly. There are all kinds of things that my son wants to do on Minecraft, and I always go, I don't know. There are some IT guys here who have helped me in the past, because I, I need to have consultants. That's Minecraft. a big thing about us, is we tell everybody, we don't want to be the biggest Minecrafts. Actually, the smaller the better, we can help people individually, but our goal is to teach the kids how to play Minecraft, how to do things, and how to handle those other servers. So eventually they'll graduate from us. and. They might come back and see us sometime or whatever, but if not, great. I mean, go go and, and survive and have a lot of fun with those other servers that you wanted to be on in the first place. Well, Stuart, there is a place in heaven reserved just for you. This is so good. Thanks. And again, they can find that at autcraft.com. And where can they find your blog? Uh, my name, stuartduncan.name. Okay. It's not even a dot .com, it's actually a dot .name. Because dot .name. Yeah. Well, really remarkable. We'll have to have you back again. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. And we're right. going to chat. Yes. Sounds good. All right. Spectacular. All right, Stuart. All right, take care, Stuart. Uh, and we're here towards the end of the show, so i got to take a couple of minutes, and thank you for being here. It's always a joy when you're here, and I'm so excited now because now you, I see the light go on in your, your <laughs> eyes about Minecraft. I can't wait to see you in a week's time to see if you've played it or if your kids have played it. Well, what's interesting is I think, I think, my, uh, I think my girlfriend's uh, kids play it, or yeah. her, young, her middle son plays it, so uh, I, I'm going to actually talk to him a lot about it, I think. It's a huge culture. You know, they have, you know how they have Comic-Con? Well, they have Minecon. Seriously? They, yes. And last year it was in Paris, and it's coming up in a couple of weeks in Florida. And do you know how long it took for the tickets to sell out? How long? 16 seconds. Are you kidding me? 16 how many, seconds. How many tickets? I don't know. That's incredible. But it took 16 well, seconds I, no, I, for it no, to sell I, out. No, I believe that because I hear everyone talking about it. Yeah. Every kid, um, you know, between the age of, uh, I would say, maybe six and yeah. in the it, teens. Yes. You know, I, and it's not just boys. Girls are right. addicted to it as well. So it's an amazing, it's an amazing culture. We had a Minecraft party this year for Jem's birthday. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a very big deal. Um, yeah, my kids never really got into it. I, well, I think you have to get introduced to it in, into a certain way because there was a time when Jem didn't know about it, and then he got into it, and then I think Jake was into it, like a couple years ago. Maybe. And, maybe. And because uh, I think I remember kind of that that look 
you uh -huh. know, but I don't know if it, that's what it was called. I don't know if it was called Minecraft at the time. Yeah, because there's another thing called Gmod, and I don't really understand the was. difference between the that's two. What and, it was. Uh, but I especially am nervous about my son playing on, on Gmod. Oh, so. really? Oh, should I be worried? Uh, well, I mean, I uh, there are times when I've found conversations and not been happy. Oh. So, and then we take Gmod away for a while, and you know, oh blah, blah, blah. boy. So yes, and this is what. The moms talk about at birthday parties about how do we keep our kids safe when they're doing these kinds of things. So, Oddcraft, oddcraft.com. Oh, very, very exciting. But I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank Alex Plank for being here. I want to thank Stuart for being here. And also to Lois Jean Brady for giving us some tips on apps. I want to also give you an update about what's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, Dr. Doreen Grampache will be here for the first hour for Let's Talk Autism, or excuse me, for uh, Ask Dr. Doreen. I'm all discombobulated now. Then the second hour, Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy, Nancy Allspot Jackson from Autism Care and Treatment today will be here to co-host that hour with me. We have a very special guest tomorrow. Uh, her name is Maria and she is going to be sharing with us a lot of different programs that are available for our Spanish speaking viewers Great. and for the families that are out there that are needing resources. Uh, it can be so, so difficult. So in any case, that's going to be tomorrow. Make sure you talk about the ART, the Autism Response Team. Absolutely. We, we will absolutely Spanish, be talking uh, about that. Yeah. Absolutely. And there's a fast Festival coming up. So uh, really uh, hoping that you'll tune in tomorrow and you can start asking your questions for Dr. Doreen Grampache tonight. You know, I like to put those together through the night and have them in the morning. You can write in during the live show, but uh, best way to get your question on for Dr. Doreen is uh, starting tonight. So send those off to us. Wonderful, wonderful opportunity to get a second to, to pick her brain. And then don't forget on Thursday, we've got more technology coming up and we're going to be featuring the film. It's actually an Autism Speaks film. I want to say the mm. documentary yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we're going to have one of the producers there we're out of time thank you so much Matt for being with us please give your kiddos a hug from me and we'll see you tomorrow bye bye for now